Hello world, Lisa Fredrickson, your friend and computer science professor with another short screencast from javascript.info, the modern JavaScript tutorial. If you've been with me all the way till this screencast, thank you. We are in part two, section four, 4.4. 4. We're gonna talk about the submit event and the submit method of a form. And this is the last screencast in this series for my JavaScript one class. Of course, I welcome any of your constructive feedback at any time. When you have a form on a page, at some point, you'll want to submit that data to the server after the user has successfully filled out the form, and you can help guide them fill out the form successfully with your JavaScript, but there are several ways to submit data on a form, and that is to either use an input element with a type of submit and click it, or an input with a type of image and click it, or if you press enter on any input field, it may be type text or number or date time. Now, if you don't want that to happen, you can use the prevent default method, which was discussed in a previous screencast, to prevent the premature submission of data on a form. And if you do that, then in your JavaScript, you'll probably want to explicitly submit that form in your JavaScript at the point in time in which you have determined that the user has completely and successfully filled out that form. I also want you to know that when a form is submitted, it refreshes the page. So that's also something to think about in your JavaScript. In this journey, I've created this custom little page and I've written two functions that are triggered on these two buttons. And I think this is the point in time when if you've been watching all these screencasts and not created your own unique little projects, it's definitely time to start creating your own unique little projects. And start small and just build something like this or a tic-tac-toe game or a bingo game or a calculator, just start building things. And that will teach you more than anybody's YouTube series or anybody's textbook. But here's what my two little functions do. First one averages the scores. I've got no scores, so my average is zero. But if I put in 100 and 90 and I average my scores, I get 95. Second one then makes sure that if I refresh this page and I try and submit data, that all the required pieces of information are filled out. And for that, I'm checking to make sure that first name and the last name are filled out. Let's look at the check entries functions, which is run by the submit button, first of all. And I'm just checking to make sure that if this is false, if there's no value in the first name, I want to declare a variable named name message and assign it to document element by ID fname message. And that's just an empty span that's in my HTML when the page loads. And I'm gonna change that fname message text content to please enter your first name. Same thing with last name. If that turns out false, then I'm going to declare a variable called full name message. I'm going to assign it to this span, which is sitting over here, and I'm going to change its text content to please enter your last name. Then on the submit data, which is this button here, I add in an event listener. When it gets clicked, we're going to run this check entries function. So that's all that's running in this case is that when I click the submit button, I'm checking to make sure both of these entries are filled in. For my average of scores button, I just created this nice little function. I'm declaring three different variables. Score one, I'm gonna get the value out of the test one box. Test two score is gonna get the value out of the test two score box. And then average score. And here's kind of an interesting thing. I had to add score one before I added it to test score two I had to use the plus sign in front of both of these because they both come off as strings. If I don't have these little plus signs, then I'm going to be concatenating strings together before I divide it by two. The result is going to be a number because I'm dividing by two, but this would be concatenation in here because when it comes off the web page, test score one and test score two are text. So then the average score after I do the calculation, I'm fixing it to decimal points. And then I'm changing document element by ID message, which is this down here, his text content property to, I can break a line after an equal sign, your average score is, and then concatenating that to the average score value. That average score function is running on the click event of the average button, which is the average scores button. So I'm gonna refresh this page one more time, fill it out, enter in a couple scores, say what my favorite class is, choose my favorite major, and average the scores, and our work is done here. Thank you.